Santos Cruz out here. Paul Vlocic and Ollie Waldock are due a good result, you've got to think. Malk and Anita were leading the Scottish Malts last week, so uh, we could have a really good rally, Tony, and we could finish in the top ten. You know, there's a slender three points between yeah. you and Mike Cochran for yeah. the Navigator's title, so <laughs> it's uh, sort of touch and go, really. Give it everything we've got. Um, obviously, Mike's an unfamiliar, um, unfamiliar driver. I'm sure he'll do very well, you know, he's uh, done very well in the past, so give it all we've got. Um, yeah, do our best and see where we're at at the end of the, end of the weekend. I think, I think I'd struggle to lose second now, but um, do everything I can to get that top spot. Simon, you're third in the Drivers' Championship, so it, it's all open really, isn't it? Well, who knows? You know, it's a shame about Angus, because these two have been fighting really, really hard at the top and we've been quietly doing our own thing just in the back. Angus has, um, is unfortunately not able to compete on this one, so it's actually thrown it quite wide open and we could see some uh, interesting results there. And when we checked the, the leaderboard most recently, it was quite a surprise to see where we actually were. So, uh, yeah, it could be all changed. Who knows? It's never over until it's over. That's rallying. You've got the Junior World Rally Championship team trying classic car rallying, regularity rallying for the very, very first time. We've done the, the learning sessions online. We know roughly what to expect. Phil's done these previously, but a long time ago. Very so, long time ago. Um, it's going to be an exciting day and uh, we're going to have lots of fun, but also try and do our best at the same time. Very, very different for you, Phil, from Jesus. pace notes and flat out on the special stages, hidden controls, average speeds. How, what are you going to make of all this lot? It's going to be really exciting. I think it's going to be a really good team development opportunity for John and I to work together in doing something a little bit different. I think it can transfer a lot over to what we're doing in stage rallying, honing a new different set of skills, which is exciting for me. I don't think I've ever sat in a classic mini before. It's so much smaller than what I expected. Like, how small the windscreen is. It's cosy in there, is what the we little, say. The little wing yeah. where, oh, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be good. And all the dials. Yeah, and the steering wheel's slightly off. Yep. Off centre, which yep. is something very classic. This is my second ever rally, though, so I feel like the pressure's on a little bit, and we're uh, we're hoping to do the Scotsman. So this is a little bit of practice for me before then, really. And something going wrong with your equipment well, already, Zach? Yeah, at the minute we've got absolutely no trip at all, so we'll see how that works out for us. <laughs> well, that's the best way. They just just laugh all the way through. Well, it, yeah, you'll, exactly. you'll get through. The great thing about this is not just the cars, but the people, it's the enthusiasm of wanting to go out there and do an event, particularly after the, after the sort of problems with COVID. So um, just thought I'd come up and have a look. Of course, there's got to be a stage where we think you should try classic car riding with the Euro right? What do you think about that as a challenge? That sounds like a real challenge to me. <laughs> I have done. I have done a, a kind of couple of rallies similar to this. It was quite challenging having to do it for the first time, but uh, I can see they've got all their little uh, uh, navigation stuff on the, on the side. Meter, the trip yeah. meters and everything, and everything's got to be timed, does it? Everything's got to be timed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're not as easy as people think. My biggest tip for anyone trying this for the first time is, is to enjoy it. Obviously, we love this sport. We have a lot of fun, and we just want to share that with everyone. Going well, we might have a running car now, which is nice. Alan's very kindly brought one spanner. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting car today, which um, we've been limping around the country. The fuel pump was broken, so I put another pump on. Got halfway down between junction 11 and 10, it conked out on the motorway probably about 30 times, and every time it goes about 300 yards and stops. And I've had all the ignition to pieces and put it all back together again. I think he's maybe just done some kind of a miracle and got it working again. <laughs> yeah, but what about the championship fight? <sighs> Is there going to be a fight? Yes. Yeah, um, oh, looking forward to tomorrow. Let's just hope it does well. Christopher and David, you're very welcome. Hero Challenge 3, the finale. But you're in the Volvo again. What's happened to the singer? We're keeping the singer for the Flying Scotsman, which we've got an entry for next, uh, next year. And uh, so looking forward to that. But yes, we thought we'd treat ourselves to a bit of comfort in the, in the Volvo. And we've got an entry for this in the jog. So, uh, so we thought we ought to put some miles on it ahead of that event. 
Wow, comfort is very important and be able to do your job, David Creech, especially the job coming up. Yep, it's pure luxury um, at the moment. It's fabulous, really. So I'll probably be asleep for half of the event today. <laughs> <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the important thing to check with Chris is whether it's got a heater for the jog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've never done the jog before, so that's going to be a whole, whole new adventure for us. And away we go! You did say you wanted to do a hero challenge. Here it is. We've got strict instructions to do as I'm told. Strict instructions. We'll find out at lunch. Three, two. One, go! We've got 10 tests and 8 regularities on the Hero Challenge Street. Four tests here at Bista, then we're going to go off to the east. Come back to Bista for four more tests and then we're going to go off to the west. So it's the final Hero Challenge 3. We have thrown in a few more advanced uh, navigation. Nothing too scary, but we've built it up each time. So the first one was, as you expect, a green-blue event at this level, and we're just building it up slowly, um, just to, you know, improve things a little bit. Three, two, one, go! Tom's Hero Challenge 3, here we are the last part of the trilogy. Uh, your impressions so far? It's great today to see uh, just under 80 cars. It's great for the sport, it's great for everybody here. Uh, pretty challenging uh, at the top, lots of minis all battling it out, lots of bees uh, out there as well, and a uh, turnout of uh, pre-war cars, which is always a good sign. to the WRC team and they were quite surprised on how fun and uh, how you're thrown around uh, you know by by the competition team around the you know the tests and uh, you know he said endurance is really the key word because obviously in WRC you do many very very quick stints it's a different format here it's you know we've been at it since eight o'clock this morning he said and that's uh, that's kind of cool so I love the fact that it's young and an old car who does WRC and sees the fun that we've all been having uh, in this I think we might actually see them again the atmosphere is great. Everyone wants to be here, don't they? We're all behaving ourselves, mostly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, generally, it's so good to be sat in the car and, you know, enjoying ourselves. Good to be in an escort. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, always. It's fantastic to be out around friends, doing what I do love, and chucking the escort around the airfield. It's great fun. so many different types of surfaces that you drive on and it's quite rough in areas as well. I imagine just having like a wide open air airfield basically, smooth tarmac with a few cones to go around. So yeah, it was uh, a bit of a surprise going in this morning. The surface has changed so much, so it's quite, quite a good way to develop car control skills because suddenly you're coming off a lot of the corners are coming off one surface onto another surface and you have to really read the road. Well. The surface is always changing, the grip level is changing so you really have to search for where the traction is on the track. Um, especially you're coming off the, the sort of dirty bits of gravel or on the sort of field sections onto the main part of the airfield. It's quite broken in areas, but there's bits that are quite uh, solid and that's where the traction is. So it's really good just to, to improve your, your driving technique and learn where the, the best traction is. And that's something you could carry forward and into stage rallying as well. getting there. I had a couple of wrong slots but we worked it out pretty quickly and come back because balance, there's a lot of stuff to balance. It's actually a really good um, skill set to develop. I'm, I'm really impressed with what some of the navigators in this uh, discipline can do. 
It's been quite challenging, to be honest. Really enjoyed the tests, but actually I wasn't expecting the test to be so uh, complicated. Yeah, we've had yeah, no, probably a couple of good regs. We had a tricky reg, uh, reg three. Uh, we made a bit of a silly mistake on, so we dropped a bit of time there, but other than that, I think we're going okay. Al did really well on the test this morning, so uh, yeah, I think we're there or thereabouts. So Mike Cochran is out now. You've got to keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Really sad to see Mike at the side of the road. Um, obviously, we wanted a, a close battle with him to the end, but fingers crossed we can uh, yeah, keep on the right route and, uh, and be there at the end. From your perspective, Alistair, there's still a lot to do, isn't there? There is, yeah. It's quite a big points gap to overhaul to Angus for the overall championship. It looks like Paul Blocksich and Oli Waldock are flying today. So the last set of results I saw, they were 15 odd seconds ahead of us. Um, good run around the first four tests, probably an average run around the second four tests, and a couple more to go at Shennington, and uh, I need to pick up a couple of bonus points from somewhere. So uh, we'll be flying with some luck. It would be going really well, except first test I got wrong. But other than that, it's, it's good. It's just great to be out again uh, with all our friends and, and, and colleagues. So really enjoying it. Datsun. Pretty good, first time out. And well, there's a few little things going wrong with it, but we're able to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> been quite mixed, got a lot of different types of navigation, a few tricks. It's been fun, been really, uh, yeah, been very enjoyable. It's been more complicated than we thought, and a lot's been packed into a day. So they're packing in as much to a day as we often do in two or three days on the longer events. How's the timing been going? Yeah, not bad. We had a bit of a slip this morning. The trip was slightly out, so we had to lasso the car in front and follow them. But we got there, we worked through it, and then redid the trip at Vista. And reasonable afternoon, I think. Natasha, here's the big question. Is your dad listening to you? Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> it's a very full, a very packed day. We're looking at the clock, you know, and how much regularities there still be done in the last hour. Just. It's crazy. So well organized and such lovely scenery and uh... So Laura, are you gonna come back for more? I think so. a great learning curve, probably more difficult than what either of us uh, expected. I've enjoyed doing it, um, been a fantastic day. Again, I think we've been everywhere and done everything we should do, which was our number one goal. Maybe not always on the same sort of time schedule that everybody else, but we're quite happy. I'm happy with it and I think we've learned a lot. How was it today, Kim? Oh, it was a hard day. Constant go, constant pressure. Had to uh, really keep thinking all the time. Been just fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Your little tricks? Yeah, yeah. Enough to keep you on your toes, and uh, but solvable if you took your time. If you didn't and you rushed at it, no, it's, it's going to catch a few people out. So, you know, well done to Serum for putting those little added additions in just to keep the navigators on their toes. I think we've had a really strong afternoon, probably better than our morning. Whether it's enough to catch Paul Blocksich and Ollie Waldock, whether it's enough just to overhaul Simon Avis, who was a couple of seconds ahead of us at lunch, don't quite know, but I think we've done everything we could have done. A long day. All of these challenge days have been a long day, but good fun at the same time. Um, the four tests back to back in and out of Pista Heritage, just such fun. If Mr McQueen has retained uh, the crown, uh, how would you feel about that? Uh, thrilled for him, honestly. We've had some great battles all year. Um, if he was here, 
he probably would have won it. I think we all know that, and he would thoroughly deserve it. So, absolutely thrilled for it. Hero Challenge Championship driver, Hero Challenge Championship navigator. How does that feel, Matt? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. We've had a brilliant year. Um, obviously, we'd have loved Mike to you know, be in the challenge all the way to the end, but uh, no, we've, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. We've had good, consistent results, second every time. We'll win one one day, but uh, no, it's been a brilliant year, so we've thoroughly enjoyed it. We've had some great experiences with Hero this year. We'll probably do more events and some of the more difficult stuff next year as well. And uh, we're out marshalling on Rally for Tess and the Jog for, uh, for the end of this year as well. So uh, we, we've thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Winners of Hero Challenge 3, but not only that, Ollie, you become our youngest ever winner of a Hero ERA event. I'm losing track of all these youngest things. <laughs> <laughs> fair play, fair yeah. play. Um, honestly, over the moon. You're really, really happy. Congratulations to you doing the double, the Scottish Malts, mm. and then literally a week later, here you are winning again in, in the. Maybe Ian um, will keep his seat because yeah, yeah. he did pretty well on that one today. No, it's been a good, a good run. Certainly, very good run.